Hello, this is a trash to treasure video where you take something you would have normally thrown out and repurpose into something new and save the planet. I'm Anna and I'm decorating from the dumpster. Oh, just kidding. These items never saw the garbage. I've kept them in a box until this video. I'm upcycling three pretty common household items. A peanut can, a tin of tea, and a pop bottle. Yeah, in Canada we call it pop, not soda. And I'm starting with the peanut can. I'm going to turn this can into a planter stand. You know those ones with the three legs and that kind of like 70s vibe? Yeah, one of those. So the materials you're going to need is your can, some kind of material to cover your can, and three dowels. And by dowels, I actually mean toilet plungers from the Dollar Tree. Yeah, seriously, these are great. Even the ends are already rounded and they're significantly cheaper than getting dowels from like a hardware store. So I'm going to start by getting the material prepped to cover the can. The edge of the fabric is white and you can see it when I wrap the can. So I'm just taking a marker, a black marker, and I'm just kind of coloring it. And then it just looks like just that line just sort of disappears. So I won't see it when I wrap the can. The fabric's cut and ready, but I don't need that right now. Right now what I need are power tools. So I need to cut my dowels, otherwise known as toilet plungers, to size. Oh, and then attach them to the bin. Yeah, that's what I need to do now. So, out to the garage. I've asked Ralph to help me out with this part because it requires power tools, particularly the impact driver, which I'm still not friends with. And, you know, for the three legs, we have to get like triangle on the bottom and whatever. So Ralph was like online and he had this like triangular calculus measuring tool. I don't know, whatever. And he's like measuring and trying to figure it out. And I just walked over with um, one of my furniture wheelie cart things and I just said why don't we use you know my official triangle measuring tool I mean that works and I don't know you don't really need a ruler so this is way more my style and my method and that's what we're going to use I mean I'm not going to use this so we're going to use this as a template to make triangles for the legs measurements I will always find a way around using measurements I think I can finally remove the plungery part off my dowels. Comes off really easy. No clue what I'm going to do with these. If anyone has a suggestion, I'll totally take it, but... Mm. I need to figure out how tall I want my planter. So I'm thinking like a can and a half. A can and a half tall, like that. So now I need to measure what something like this is and cut them. And I need to have them at an angle because if they're straight up, this thing's just going to topple over. So we have to figure out the height and we have to figure out the angle. And I don't want it to be like splayed really weird. I need just a slight angle and then this height, can and three quarters high. My measurements are terrible. Nine inches. My legs are going to be nine inches and angled. However angled the rough decides they're going to be. Okay, now I'm just give it to Ralph to do the rest. After I arranged the miter saw to my liking, I set up a stop block to cut all three wood pieces to nine inches. Remember, measure twice, cut once. For an angle, I decided, with Anna's approval, to six degrees for the flare in the planter's legs. Using a nail, I place divots into the can before drilling the holes for the leg placement. This makes it easier when drilling as the bit doesn't slide around. 
Before attaching the legs to the can, I pre-drilled holes in the wood legs to prevent any splitting when screwing them to the can. To make sure that the legs would be tightly secured, E6000 glue was used along with screws. Glue and screws are always the best way to secure two butt joints. I removed all the stickers, and yes, all three legs were that difficult to remove the stickers. Uh, maybe they think because they're toilet plungers that people might not want to remove the stickers. I don't know, but so difficult to remove. And I've sanded. So this means I can move on to staining. And I have a little leftover of this chocolate stain that I've used before, and I'm gonna use that just to stain up the legs. The legs are dry so I can move on. And by moving on, I mean doing something with these parts of the legs that looks like I missed staining them, but I did that on purpose. And the first step is some taping. Okay, taped off. And now I just need to cover the rest of the can. So I have to get it back. Of course I'm gonna spray paint. I'm going to be using this flat white as my primer because I keep forgetting to buy spray primer. So I'm gonna use this because it's a two in one. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of silver. This is that time to dry overnight and I'm kind of excited to see what it looks like. The legs turned out kind of fun. And because it's spray paint, the lines are super crisp. Now, I still need to wax the legs to seal them, but right now I want to put the cover on. Well, it's like a cover, I don't know, like the something to, oh, that, ooh, gosh, that already looks really good. So that's what I'm gonna put on. And I'm just going to use some E6000, I'm really getting low on my tube, and hot glue. The reason I use the two of them is the hot glue will set it immediately, but then the E6000 will hold it long term because that stuff like sticks everything. So I'm going to start with the hot glue and then just wrap it around. Now, if your decor isn't silver, like maybe you have gold or some other color, bronze, I don't know, black, then you could spray paint your whole tin before wrapping it up like this. And you could spray paint this part, whatever color, gold, rose gold. But yeah, so since my decor has a lot of silver in it, I can get away with just leaving the can just like this. Ta-da! I now have a peanut can planter. Who would have thought? It doesn't look like a peanut can. It's actually really cute. And it gives me the perfect excuse to buy a new plant and then just find this a cute little home. And now to upcycling plastic pop bottles. I have two of them, a one liter and a two liter, and I'm going to turn these into a cloche. You know, one of these. Step one, remove all the caps and the labels. Step two, Cut off where the cap screws on. You can either leave this ridge right here or you can cut down here. Cutting down here is easier, but I'm gonna try keeping the ridge. I kind of think I'm gonna like that look better. So I think the Dremel might be my best bet. Step 
three, cut the bottle to whatever height you want your cloche to be. And try to measure if you're terrible at cutting straight like I am. I'm terrible at measuring and cutting straight. Ooh, good for me. Make sure to cut the bottom as smooth as possible. You don't want any like jagged parts or any burrs or anything. So just try to cut it as smooth as possible. And now to step four. You'll use a one cup glass measuring cup for the one liter and a two cup measuring cup for the two liter. Now this is the interesting part. Heat up a nonstick pan on low. Put in your cloche. Well, it's not a cloche yet, so your half cup pot bottle, I guess. Put that into the pan and press down. Slowly move the bottle around. The edge will start to curl. Once it's curled about an eighth or a quarter inch, move it quickly to an upside down glass measuring cup. Curling the bottom hardens the edge and strengthens the whole bottle, so it's not floppy like a pop bottle normally is. And it looks better. If you mess up on your first try, don't worry. You just have to cut off the bottom and start all over. Step five, clean the bottles from the glue and these numbers. I don't know if you can see them. Bottles just have some numbers on them. So I'm going to be using some Goo Gone and rubbing alcohol. And if I need to for the numbers here, I will use some acetone, but Goo Gone first. They cleaned up really well. The Goo Gone actually got the blue numbers off easy, so no need for acetone. That was pretty nice. But step number six, add some toppers. So wine corks, yeah, these are wine corks, fit really well. Like that just looks cute, see? So you can use a wine cork, and I also happen to have a glass wine cork. It's just from, there's certain wine bottles here, they're usually rosés, and they have glass corks. So that also fits really cute. So that's just another idea. Now, if you're like, oh, I don't want to do wine corks, I have one more option. And it's these little wooden beads. They just look like big balls that I picked up at Michael's. And let's see what they look like on top. There's different sizes, and I got like the biggest ones I could find there. Wow, I'm getting the bags hard. So we have this size and this size. So there's just two different sizes. Let's see which one looks best. Oh, that's really cute. Oh my gosh. So that's a smaller size. Oh, I really like, oh, I don't know now. Okay, let's see. I think I would say the smaller ball on the one liter bottle, well, one liter bottle cloche, and then the larger ball on the two liter. Yeah. Okay. And you can leave them just plain wood. They actually have a nice finish. They're smoothed it out really well. But I think I wanna add a little bit of color in case I use this in the kitchen where everything's dark. But look really cute in here too. Oh, these are so cute. Wow, oh, it's a pop bottle, wow. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit of color to this and then just glue it on. For the corks, you wouldn't need to glue it on, you can just pop it on. And that's perfect. See, wouldn't this look cute? You have like a cheese board and then like you're having like a wine and cheese night and you have like some of the cheese underneath and you can cover it up so it doesn't dry out. But you have the wine cork to kind of go with the theme. I just think that's so cute. I don't know, just a thought. Okay, time to do something to this little ball.
And here's how my topper ball turned out. I did use two different stains and I kind of just mixed them together. So I didn't, know, I didn't want it to be as dark as one and as light as the other. So I just kind of mixed them up and I really like the result. Now, last thing to do is just secure my topper on with some B6000. I buy Harney's tea because it is a good tea, but really it's because of these tins. They're so pretty. And I'm turning this one into a sewing box. My inspiration comes from Dainty Dress Diaries. If you want to see DIY done by a funny Irish lass, I recommend checking out her channel. Now I'm not making mine exactly the way she did. She's just my inspiration. Right now I store all my pins, my straight pins in this and the lid doesn't stay on really well and I've spilt them so many times. My actual sewing kit still has pins all over it, which I'm gonna have to dig out later. But now this is going to be my replacement. I'm going to start by gluing some magnets in the middle. I'll show you what these are for once the project's done. Next, I'm cutting some batting. This is leftovers from my headboard makeover video, but you can use a dollar store sponge if you don't have any batting. Now I need to attach the sponge to the top, and I'm gonna do that with some hot glue. To cover my little spongy top, I have some pretty fabric. I don't know why, but when I saw this fabric, I just, I just really was drawn to it. It's not something typically that I would have, but I just really liked it. Hmm. So that's what I'm gonna use on the top. And this will involve a little bit of sewing, but kind of makes sense since it is a sewing project or a sewing tin. So let's cut my fabric. So I have my crooked piece of fabric, because I cut it crooked, and I just need to straighten it out a little bit because that looks, that looks wonky. So I'm just going to straighten it out. I know, I have to get a rotary cutter. I had one, but it was from the Dollar Tree, and I broke it, obviously. But I really did like using it and it did help getting straighter lines. I just haven't gotten a new one yet. So on my list, I've measured out that my fabric cover needs to be five and a half inches. And I want to sew a half inch double folded seam all the way around. That adds an inch to each side. So I've trimmed my fabric down to a seven and a half inch square. The seams are folded and pressed and I just have to give a quick little sew around the square. I've centered the can on the fabric square and I put a pin in each corner. Now I can put this on top and figure out my corners. I'm going to pinch the corners and put a pin in each corner to hold it down. So what I need to do now is just sew straight down this angle that I made and then cut off the tab. And then it'll be like a little cover. Well, all that for nothing, because I was supposed to do it with the fabric inside out. I don't get a nice seam. Yay, I get to do it all over again. At least I only did one corner. 
So let's just take this apart and um, do it all over again. Uh, me and sewing. Okay, I've redone it the correct way around now, which is the upside down way. And what I'm going to do to make my life just a little bit easier is I'm going to finger sew, just like finger stitch, just what the seams, how the seams need to be closed, just so I don't have all these needles, all these pins while I'm sewing. So I'm gonna try that. But now let's see how it fits. Yeah, just a little bit of fighting to get it on, but I can do it. Okay. Yeah. So now I can cut off my corners. It's on. It just looks, it looks like the tin's wearing, it's like he has hair and he's wearing a hat. But that's how he's gonna stay. I now have to attach this, which I'm going to do with hot glue, E6000 and clips. So, first a little dab of hot glue. I'm just gonna do that all around. And then once that sets, I'm gonna start adding the E6000. This might seem silly, but I think this is the best thing I've ever sewn. It just fits perfectly. And it's so cute. But now, remember how I put magnets in it? Let me show you why. I'm going to store all my straight pins in here, but I know that if I just keep sticking my fingers in to grab them, I'll eventually stab myself. So here's my idea. Let's take the lid off and fill this with all the pins. Don't need this anymore. Put the lid back on and shake it. Ta-da! Pins stick to the lid now. Now I know it's not a lot of pins and I could have put more magnets, but I don't really want a lot. I want these to be easy to grab so then I could just use them the lid back on. Let's see. Look how cute that fits. It sticks so cute. Perfect. Trash to treasure projects are a lot of fun. I get to be creative and reinvent something from being garbage to something useful. And I really didn't spend a lot of money. I had most of the supplies already on hand. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. If you enjoy these little makeovers, give this video a like and share it. And if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd consider subscribing. And with that, thanks again, and I'll see you soon with another project. Bye. This kind of looks like a sandwich now. I don't like a weird sandwich, but it does totally has like sandwich. Totally has sandwich vibes. Anyways, okay. I'm not making a sandwich like a border. I want to sew like an, oh, I don't remember. Look, Caleb's getting a snack. Doesn't he look so happy? I think he really likes his new cloche made from a pop bottle. Look how happy he looks. He's just gonna be so happy eating those cookies. And they're gonna be fresh because they're covered up. Are you happy, Caleb? You are, right? Yeah. That's a good boy.